Today we're going to be creating a typewriter effect that looks like this in NativeScript. That's coming right up. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Alex. And if this is your first time here, click subscribe to get all the latest NativeScript tips, tricks, and tutorials right here on this channel. And if you want to learn NativeScript in depth, check out nativescripting.com, where we have full length NativeScript courses, free courses, paid courses, all different levels of courses. We've got NativeScript Angular, Core, and Vue, and they're organized into tracks. So if you want to follow from the beginning all the way to mastering the framework, you can do that given the UI stack that you're interested in. All right, speaking of NativeScript Angular, a couple of weeks ago, I ran a contest. This is the NativeScript for Angular Mobile Development book by Nathaniel Anderson and Nathan Walker. Both of them are from NStudio, and both of them have been on this channel. Check out the videos in the channel for interviews that I've had with these guys. You can pick up this book on Amazon, but there's one person that doesn't have to, and that's Defria Manda. I hope I said your name correctly. You won this book, congratulations, and thanks for retweeting that message that I hid into one of the tutorial videos, and thanks for watching this channel. We'll be doing more giveaways like this coming up. Now, for the tutorial today, we're gonna be using animations to animate text to make it simulate a typewriter. We're gonna be doing this using easings, a specific function that I'm going to give you to be able to recreate this type of effect that I'm doing. But if you wanna learn a lot more about easings and the different animation timing functions, check out my video from last week that I posted about three different methods and techniques for doing animation timing functions. This effect is pretty useful for just displaying an animated piece of text that you really can't animate using NativeScript APIs, but you can using the technique I'm gonna show you. And also this technique is useful for placeholders in text fields. If you wanna really draw your user's attention to a text field and to what they're supposed to type in there, this is a good technique for that. I'll show that at the end of this video. All right, let's get on with it. All right, we're gonna start off with our Hello World template again, and it's pretty simple. Here is my main page.xml file. Let's close this up so we have more space. All we have here is a button that I want to have an on tap handler. Now, instead of binding this, I'm just gonna call on tap in the code behind file. Here's main page.xml, here's main page.ts, which is the code behind file. And I've exported the on tap function here. Now, let's grab a hold of that button. Args.object is our button, so I'm gonna Go ahead and cast that as a view, const view equals, and save that off as a view variable here, or a view constant. Now to get a hold of the thing we wanna animate, I wanna animate this label right here, which is bound to this message property. Instead of binding it to the message property, let's just have some inline text. Hello world, all right, typical. And I'm gonna give this label an ID of LBL. Therefore, I can grab a hold of that now in code. So I'm gonna say view.page.getViewById and we're gonna get LBL, which is our label, as label. Now I need to import label, so that's coming from TNS core modules UI slash label. All right, let's go ahead and say that we wanna import a label here and there we go. Now we got a hold of the label, I'm just gonna save it into an LBL variable here, LBL constant, I keep saying that. <laughs> it's a constant, Alex, not a variable. Ugh, old school. Now, LBL has a text property and we can access it here. We're gonna need that. But before we do that, before we alter the text, let me tell you about animation helpers. If you didn't see the video on where we build this up, check out my animate anything using JavaScript in NativeScript video. I'll link to it down below and you can find it in the YouTube channel here. Basically, I show you how to build up this whole animate function where we can animate any single property in native script using JavaScript. Of course, we can't animate text using the native script animation APIs. So that's why we're gonna use this animation helpers library. Now let's save off uh, into a constant. We're gonna save off the final text. So this is the text we want the label to have at the very end. And that's the current text. So label.text is what we're gonna save off. So whatever text I put in here, hello world in this case, that's the final text. Of course, you can make this anything you want. Let's just make it something else. Hello, beautiful world. Okay, just so that you can see, we could use another text string here as well. Now let's build up our animation definitions. So I'm gonna say const def 
Node.js animation definition. And that's going to have a couple of functions here. Again, I'm not going to explain all these in detail, but you can check out the other videos that I have related to this topic, including that one I just mentioned. And recently I have the animation curves video that will explain things about this as well, because we're going to use a non-standard curve here. This is what we've just created, this JS animation definition. And then in order to do the animation, we're going to call the animate function over a certain duration. So let's give it um, five seconds or 5,000 milliseconds. And finally, we need to pass in an array of these definitions. In this case, we only have one. So we'll just pass that in there. Okay, back to the definition. What do we need here? Well, we need a curve. Let's start out with the linear curve. Very simple here, T to T. Then we're going to need a get range function. So this is going to need to return to us where we're starting from and where we're going to. So this has from, let's say from zero to, and then final text dot length. All right. So why are we using these values? Well, we want to see this written out like a typewriter would type it out, this text in the label. So we're going to start out with nothing written there. That's zero number of characters. And then we're going to go to the number of characters in the final string. That's final text dot length. Okay. So there's our range. The next is the step function. So this will provide us a value V of where in the animation we are. So for every single frame, this step function will be triggered and it'll pass in the value V. What do we do with that value V? Well, we're going to take a substring of the final text and we're going to start with zero. And the second value will be math dot ceiling. So we want to take the ceiling of that value V. By the way, V will always be from zero to the final text length. It'll be in between those. That's why we're going to get a ceiling of it. And then we're going to take a substring of the final text and we're going to set label dot text to whatever the result of that calculation is. Let's save this and test this out. So I'm going to hit tab here and you'll see hello world or hello beautiful world being typed out very slowly. And that's called a linear curve. Mm, it works, I guess, but we're going to change that curve to something more interesting. Now, if you haven't seen my video on animation curves, definitely check that out. I explained to you what this means. I'm going to paste this in right here. It's a weird curve calculation that's going to give us a little bit more of a swing to that animation. So I'm going to hit tab here and you'll see that H and then hello, beautiful world starts typing out very slowly and then it speeds up towards the end and then slows down at the very end. So that's the animation curve. You can control these curves and give different functions here. You can even use easing libraries like D3Es. And I show you how to do that in that other video. Now let's look at something else. I'm going to provide a different string here so you can see a more exaggerated approach to that. So here's a long string. Let's go ahead and tap this and you can see that function going really fast and then it slows down towards the end. Pretty cool, huh? Of course, this would look better if it wasn't centered and we can use something other than a label. For example, we can use a text view. I'm going to leave the ideas label doesn't matter. And there's a text view. A text view is something we can type in, as you can see. But if I hit tap here, you'll see that we have the full animation happen. Let's take off the H2 class because it's making everything really large. And you'll see that we can have that same typing effect here as well. And it's kind of natural feeling because it starts out slow and speeds up towards the middle and then it slows down at the end. Now, you don't need to do something this drastic either. This can be used for a very subtle effect. For example, if we have a text field here and then we have a hint property now you might know hint as like a placeholder on the web it's not actual text but it's a hint so it's not going to interfere with your users it's just going to animate the hint so let's go ahead and say import text field all right and that's coming from tns core modules ui text field and instead of the label here, we're just going to say, let's grab it as a text field because we need to cast it as a text field because that's what has a hint. So this now will have a hint property on it. Labels don't have a hint property. And instead of all this long text, we can say enter username. So here's a more realistic example for you. So there's hello world as the hint. And if we say tap here, you'll see enter username being typed in there and just to get attention of the user. So when the user taps into the box, you still have that enter username in there, but they can start typing here with their own name. Pretty cool effect, right? 
If you want to see any other kinds of effects like this, let me know down in the comments. What are you working on? Let me know if I can help. Maybe a lot of people are asking the same thing and wondering the same thing. That's what the comment section is for down below. And if you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the little notification button so you don't miss any of the tips, tricks, and tutorials that we do here. You can also reach me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix over there. And I'll see you all in the next video. Happy native scripting.